While typical hackers might target individual devices, small to large networks, or businesses, the impact of nation-state hackers is on an entirely different scale. Their activities can bring entire nations to a standstill, infect millions of computers, and cause significant damage to major infrastructure. This has been evident in incidents like the Stuxnet cyber attack, Operation Shady Rat, and the cyber assaults against Ukraine in 2015 and 2016. This operation demonstrates a level of scale and complexity previously unheard of, each orchestrated by nation-wielding cyber tools as weapons. But what exactly goes into these operations? What insight can we gain about the groups behind these state-sponsored acts? Who are the key players in this arena? And what does the future hold for cyber warfare at this level? This is all of what we are going to speak about and more. So first things first, and let's discuss the differences between nation-state hackers to individuals and professional uh, hacker groups. And state-sponsored hacking refers to cyber operations that are financed and directed by national governments. These activities are part of a broader strategy of cyber warfare, aimed to advancing a country's national interests. The goals of state-sponsored hackers are typically aligned with the strategic interests of their nation. This includes gathering intelligence or espionage, stealing intellectual property to gain economic uh, advantages, and influencing political events or opinion in other countries. One of the most distinguishing features of state sponsors uh, hacking is the level of resources at their disposal. These operations are backed by nearly unlimited funding, sophisticated technology, and a large workforce of skilled hacker and analyst. This allows for the execution of complex high impact operations. In terms of tactics and longevity, state sponsors hackers are known for their strategic approach. They often engage in long-term missions requiring months or even years of planning and execution. Their tactics can include advanced persistent threats, where they establish a long-term presence in a network to continuously gather information. On the other hand, individual hackers and crime groups operate independently of state control. Their motivations can range from personal challenge and recognition, activism, of course, to financial gains. Now, in terms of objectives, unlike the state actors, individual hackers or criminal groups often engage in activities, mainly financial theft, personal data breaches for a profit, and sometimes vandalism or activism. These actors typically have fewer resources compared to state-backed operations. Their tools might be less sophisticated, and their operations are usually on a smaller scale, targeting individual organizations or systems rather than conducting widespread campaigns. In terms of tactics and longevity, individual hackers and crime groups tend to favor Quicker payoffs, their attacks such as ransomware or phishing uh, schemes are generally shorter term and more opportunistic compared to the calculated long-term strategies of state actors. So now that we understand the differences, let's see how state-sponsored hackers deploy a suit of highly sophisticated technique to fulfill their strategic goals. And at the forefront of their arsenal is advanced malware, complex software designed specifically to disrupt, damage, or gain unauthorized access to computer systems. This malware often goes beyond conventional detection methods, employing stealthy tactics to evade cybersecurity defenses and allowing attackers to secretly siphon data or take control of systems. Another critical tool in their repository is the exploitation of zero days vulnerabilities. And these are previously unknown flaws in software or hardware that haven't yet been patched by the developers. Since these vulnerabilities are not known to the public or the software creators at the time of the attack, they provide a powerful means for hackers to infiltrate systems without being detected.
Additionally, state-sponsored hackers frequently utilize social engineering tactics. This involves manipulating individuals into divulging confidential information or performing actions that compromise the security of their organizations. Tactics can range from phishing, sending deceptive emails that appear legitimate to trick recipients into revealing sensitive data, to more complex uh, schemes that involve building trust over time with their targets. By exploiting human psychology rather than technical vulnerabilities, these attackers can bypass even the most robust cybersecurity measures. Two notable examples illustrate the sophistication and impact of these tactics. The first one is Stuxnet uh, Rome. And some background, Stuxnet discovered in 2010 is one of the most famous pieces of malware ever created. It targeted supervisory control and data acquisition, SCADA systems, and was specifically crafted to damage Iran nuclear program. The worm exploited four zero-day vulnerabilities in Microsoft Windows and spread to infected USB drivers. Once inside the system, it sought out specific Siemens industrial control system, altering the speed of the centrifuges used to enrich uranium while displaying normal operating conditions to users. The impact was successfully damaged approximately 1,000 of the 5,000 centrifuges at Iran Natanz uranium enrichment facility, setting back the country's nuclear program significantly. And this operation marked a turning point in cyber warfare, demonstrating how a digital attack could have tangible physical consequences on critical infrastructure. And if you didn't see my video about it, so I will leave the links on the description and on the screen for you to watch. The second notable example is the SolarWinds hack, and it was discovered in December 2020, and the SolarWinds hack was a sophisticated and wide-ranging espionage campaign that affected numerous US governments, agencies, and private companies. The attackers compromised the infrastructure of SolarWinds, a company that provides network management software. They inserted malicious code into the company's Orion software updates, allowing them to gain access to the network of SolarWinds clients. This attack compromised several U.S. government agencies, including the Treasury, Commerce, State, Energy, and Homeland Security Departments, along with thousands of private sector companies. The SolarWinds Act highlighted the vulnerabilities in the supply chain and the far-reaching implications of compromising widely used software products. It demonstrated a high level of sophistication in terms of planning, execution, and the ability to remain under detected for the, a prolonged period. So these examples underscore the evolving landscape of cyber threat posed by nation state actors. Their ability to execute complex high impact operation poses significant challenges for cybersecurity defenses worldwide. So who are the most powerful and active cyber armies today? The first definitely is the U.S. Cyber Command, NSA's Tailored Access Operations. And the NSA Tailored Access Operations, the TAO, is a key component of the NSA Signals Intelligence Directorate, consisting of over 1,000 military and civilian hackers, intelligence analysts, and other specialists. The TAO is known for infiltrating and gathering intelligence on foreign computer systems. Their operations often target network equipment due to its broad access potential, as well as intercepting physical devices to insert monitoring capabilities. This unit plays a significant role in the NSA's cyber surveillance efforts and extends previous capabilities for monitoring radio communications to a broader array of network systems. Next one is Russia GRU Unit 26165. And while specific details about Russia's GRU Unit 26165 aren't available in the same depth, it's widely reported and believed that this unit was involved in high-profile operations, including the alleged interference in the 2016 US presidential elections. The tactics likely include sophisticated cyber espionage and influence campaign. The next player is 
China PLA's unit 61398 and PLA's unit 61398 affiliated with China is primarily engaged in economical and industrial espionage. This unit is known for its focus on cyber operations aimed at intellectual property theft, strategically positioning China to gain competitive advantages in key global industries. Their activities underscores China emphasis on leveraging cyber capabilities for economic growth and technological advancement. The next nation state uh, sponsored hacker group is Lazarus from North Korea. And the Lazarus group associated with North Korea is known for its financial motivations and sophisticated cyber capabilities. One of its most notorious acts was the attempted heist from the Bangladesh bank reflecting a focus on large-scale financial theft. Other significant attacks attributed to the group include the WannaCry ransomware attack in 2017, affected over 200,000 computers globally, causing widespread disruption, particularly in healthcare systems. Another famous one was Sony Picture Act in 2014, resulted in the leak of sensitive data in response to the movie The Interview that portrayed North Korea leader. And the third example is cryptocurrency ICE involving numerous attacks on cryptocurrency exchanges to siphon off funds showcasing their evolving tactics for financial gains. Another key nation state uh, player is Iran's APT-33, which is engaged in espionage and disruptive cyber attacks, utilizing sophisticated cyber warfare techniques. Their operation of their target regional adversaries focusing on sectors that are geopolitical significant to Iranian interests. Notable examples of attacks attributed to APT-33 include the Shamoon attacks, and APT-33 is believed to be behind the Shamoon disk wiping malware attacks that targeted the energy sectors in the Middle East, particularly in Saudi Arabia. These attacks occurring in waves since 2012 have caused significant disruption by wiping data on thousands of computers, rendering them inoperable. Another example is refined kitten uh, campaigns, and this series of cyber espionage campaigns targeted a variety of organizations, including those in the aviation industry and energy sectors, primarily in the United States, Saudi Arabia, and South Korea. The campaigns involve sophisticated spear phishing efforts to gain access to sensitive information. Moving to the last key nation state actor is Israel with Unit 8200. And Israel elite's intelligence unit is considered a leader in technical intelligence, on par with the NSA, but more focused and tenacious in its operations. They operate a large signet based capable of monitoring communication across regions, including the Middle East, Europe, Asia and Africa. And Unit 8200 has been involved in various significant operations, including reportedly playing a role in the development of the Stuxnet computer worm. The unit is also known for its contribution to the Israeli iTech scene, with many alumni founding successful tech companies. Okay, so let's move to the power of governmental hackers. This is not just in their skills, but in their strategic alignment with national security objectives, allowing them to orchestrate sophisticated large-scale cyber operations. These state-sponsored units are equipped with cutting-edge technology, often suppressing that available to private sectors, enabling them to execute missions that can alter the geopolitical landscape. What many may not realize is the extent of their capabilities. For instance, some governmental hackers have the ability to manipulate energy grids, potentially plunging entire cities into darkness or to interfere with critical communication networks during times of crisis. They also possess the capability to influence public opinion to have orchestrated disinformation campaigns affecting election outcomes and swaying political landscapes. Moreover, these units often operate in a legal gray area, exploiting international cyber laws that have yet to catch up with the rapid advancement of technology. This allows them to conduct operations that, while impactful, may not technically be considered acts of war. 
this combination of advanced technological prowess, strategic geopolitical objectives, and the ability to operate with relative impunity makes governmental hackers a formidable force. It highlights the urgent need for not just advanced cybersecurity measures, but also for international cooperation and legislation to protect national interests and maintain global stability. So how do you defend against the digital threat and to mitigate the risk posed by sophisticated cyber uh, threat nations and corporations are increasingly implementing comprehensive defense strategies. This includes the development of a robust cybersecurity framework which provides a structured approach to managing and mitigating cyber risk. Continuous threat intelligence gathering is crucial for staying ahead of emerging threats and adjusting defenses accordingly. Additionally, regular staff training is vital to ensure personnel are aware of potential cyber threats and best practices in cybersecurity. On a global scale, international cooperation plays a pivotal role. An exemplary instance of this is the Budapest Convention on Cybercrime, which fosters international collaboration in combating cybercrime and establishes a cooperative framework for nations to share information and resources. Such international agreements and collaborations are essential for setting global standards and effectively countering the ever-evolving nature of cyber threats. So what can we expect on the future of state sponsors uh, hacking? And it is likely to see significant advancements due to the integration of artificial intelligence and quantum computing. AI enhances the capacity for large-scale data analysis and autonomous operations, potentially allowing for more sophisticated target cyber attacks. Quantum computing, with its superior processing capabilities, can revolutionize cryptography, presenting both opportunities and challenges for cybersecurity. The combination of AI and quantum computing and cyber warfare may lead to novel attacks method, necessitating a re-evaluation of current security protocols to address these emerging threats. With that said, thank you for joining this exploration into the world of nation-state hacking. Stay informed and proactive in the evolving cyber landscape. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share your thoughts in the comments below. Until the next time, bye!